So I am speaking about innovation today, and it is a word that gets bandied around a lot. Um, and with that sort of focus on the forest sector, I sort of wanted to explore the idea, is, is that hype really justified? And, and should it be a, a, a word and an area that we sort of continue to use to the extent that we actually do? So given um, that the majority of your backgrounds, I believe, are not in the forest sector, I thought that it would be useful for me to just have a, give you a really high level overview of this industry in Australia, just to sort of give you a bit of a comparison between that and um, some of the areas that you work in. So as you can see, there is a, um, mainly down the eastern seaboard of Australia there, we have quite expansive native forest um, resource. Uh, and then that's complemented by uh, a million and just shy of a million hectares of softwood and hardwood plantations. The vast majority of our, our harvested wood does come from plantations in Australia, over 80%. And of um, all those native forests, we only uh, harvest a really small proportion of that every year. In terms of a little bit of a comparison between the forest sector and, um, and the farming sector, we have a turnover of about 22 billion, um, farm production about, uh, you know, just under 50 billion there. We uh, have a support around 120,000 jobs, which of course are mainly rural and regionally based. Um, and as you'll sort of learn today, there's lots of reasons for our industry to be, um, to be optimistic, but uh, risks um, do exist for our industry and some of those I think are uh, particular to the forest sector, particularly as I'm sure a lot of you would be aware, you know, some of the controversies I guess that exist around native, uh, native forest harvesting and uh, establishing plantations in uh, the rural, rural areas. But um, more importantly, I think that uh, there's, there's more reasons, I think, to be optimistic than there is to be pessimistic. In terms of trends in our, um, in uh, particularly establishment of plantations, you can see there that uh, there's been a largely a flatlining, slight decrease of softwood plantations in Australia with a really erratic uh, establishment of hardwood plantations uh, and that's really uh, a reflection of the planting uh, from the MIS um, initiatives, I guess. Uh, and we see today uh, some of those areas that were planted, particularly to blue gums, are now being um, returned back to agriculture area, agricultural areas. And in terms of our consumption of uh, forest products, um, you can see we've got a sl uh, an ongoing decrease of hardwood products. Generally, uh, you know, fairly even use of panels and there's, you know, a little bit of movement there with softwood, but overall, um, over a, a 10 year period, it hasn't changed too much. If I gave you a graph of imports though, you would see uh, an increasing trends of imports of both softwood and panels into Australia. So I do just want to emphasise um, here is that whilst the forest sectors and agricultural sectors often work in relative isolation, we probably do have more in common than we have different, if that's the right English. Um, uh, you know, we plant it, we tend it, we grow it, we harvest it, we process it. And so I just want you to keep that in mind as, you know, I do work through uh, the messages that I do have about the industry that I work in. So moving on to the topic of innovation. So it is a word that we hear a lot. Um, you know, uh, there's reports and uh, departments and conference sessions that all focus on the potential of innovation and that we, you know, it, it's, um, you know, we have innovate or die and all, all these kind of messages. But, you know, what does it really mean? And, and is it really sort of the, the panacea to, to our sort of a competitive advantage. Uh, this has already been touched on, so I didn't want to focus on it but too, for too long, but just sort of putting up there a little bit of a definition of innovation and perhaps more importantly, innovativeness. 
interestingly enough, in the academic literature, there actually isn't an agreed definition on um, innovation and particularly innovativeness. But, you know, generally we are talking about something new, but I think what's really important there is we're not, we're really good at, and as you'll see as I work through these slides, really good at, I think, of thinking of innovation as being a product or perhaps a new way of processing things, but innovation really does span our whole, um, I was going to say our whole businesses, but also our whole way that our sectors do uh, do work and, and interact and, and operate. Um, and importantly, innovative companies are those ones that uh, Bronwyn put up earlier of being, uh, you know, the early adopters of new concepts, new ways of doing things, new technologies. Um, and the reason we do focus on this is that there really is a clear a clear link between those organisations that do position themselves like that uh, and their financial performance over time. So, thinking about the forest sector, and I think um, there's a, a range of these points relate, I think, back to the agriculture sector as well. Um, the reasons why our sector should be optimistic is we do have a growing population in Australia and with that does come a growing need for um, for forest and forest products. Uh, really importantly, we are wholly renewable, so the products that we typically compete with, steel and concrete, um, can't make that claim and, and uh, you know, that's only be going to become more important. We have low carbon emissions in both the manufacture of our goods, but also importantly, you know, we store uh, carbon in our finished products. We provide a wide range of ecosystem services and we're rural and regionally based. And like um, uh, our, our previous speakers, you know, I can, there are lots of examples in our industry that um, I can provide around uh, product innovations that our industry has come up with. And in some ways, as I work through the following slides, you know, that's almost, um, dare I say it, in opposition to some of the messages that come out of uh, some of the research of how our industry does, unfortunately, uh, sort of get... Uh, classified, I guess, in this in this area. But we increasingly see use of wood in uh, multi-storey residential and commercial buildings, and some of you might be familiar with the Forte building in Melbourne, which is, I think, still the tallest uh, um, wood or timber apartment building in the world. And uh, that's been enabled as a result of a new uh, engineered wood product called cross-laminated timber. Um, and a really exciting area for timber is um, increasing applications for wood that um, allow it to be used in a range of applications that you would previously use fossil fuels for. And, um, you know, this does take a lot, you know, producing these sort of new products does take a lot of investment and it's something that particular Canada uh, has really focused on and, and their government over there is providing you know, tens of millions of dollars worth of investment because they see the opportunities uh, and, and the returns that uh, these products might, might provide to their, um, their country. And picking up on a point that uh, Bronwyn made earlier about the importance of networks outside of people like you, uh, is they've established this Biopathways Partnership Network, um, which is doing just that in terms of bringing together voluntarily uh, a range of companies and organisations that the forest sector wouldn't necessarily typically interact with to come up with um, these, these new product ideas and, and approaches. So I've spent a bit of time um, looking around at uh, if our sector really embraced um, innovation, you know, what sort of benefits would it would it deliver? And sure enough, you know, people have gone out there and done some, you know, I think it's fairly high level and it's, you know, potentially not particularly um, precise. But, you know, surprise, surprise, if we uh, make the investments and we uh, sort of more precisely, I guess, manage our, um, our, in this case, plantations and apply the right nutrition and, and manage our sites well, we can significantly improve um, our recoverable volume uh, across our, in this case, a, a softwood plantation. 
and this was an example from another reference where if we, um, if we improve and optimise each step of the value chain, um, again, guess what? We're going to see uh, improved returns to the organisation and to our industry. I do think it's important to say at this point, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really easy to put a lot of emphasis back on the individual businesses, um, but some of these um, sort of optimizations, I guess, of the industry uh, are often enabled also as a result of the effect, uh, effective policy and, and policy drivers there, if we are actually going to optimise the returns uh, for this as well as, you know, obviously other sectors as well. So I, you know, I gave, as I said, I gave you those examples as to why we should be um, why we should be positive, uh, and so I thought it might be interesting to tell you what some of the research is actually telling you as to, or telling us, sorry, as to how does our industry actually behave. Um, and so th these messages here are actually research based in mainly in the U.S. We haven't done a lot of research in Australia looking at. Um, innovation uh, in the sort of forest sector in, in Australia in the way that they have done it in the US and, and to a um, slightly sort of different extent in Europe. But unfortunately, unfortunately the messages aren't great. Um, and so forest industry managers don't generally see their operations as highly innovative. And as I said earlier, they're generally much better, and this is talking at a sort of processing end rather than um, uh, from a growing end, but they're generally much better at focusing on those production processes and increasing their efficiencies and those kind of innovations than they are other forms of innovation across their business. And I think, you know, you could say the same thing about at the planting end. I think we're probably much looking at that, um, this one, this graph here, you know, we're really good at identifying what are those sort of nutritional silver culture sort of um, uh, changes that we can make to improve the sort of straight productivity of our sites. And sort of broadly, you know, it's not really a, um, a wish list for an organisation there, is it, in terms of how our, how our companies are, are typically regarded um, as to how they sort of behave in terms of, I guess, grasping the opportunities associated with innovation. So I, um, as part of some other work that I'm doing, I happen to be uh, sort of in the midst of running a, uh, a survey of our sector. And so this is, I guess, to, in comparison to some of that research that I just showed you uh, from the US, this is uh, a little bit of a response of sort of how, how we're tracking and behaving, I guess, in Australia. And so I asked, um, uh, and this is across the forest sector in Australia, I asked the, the question is, well, how high is the potential for innovation? And as I said earlier, there's lots and lots of reasons to be optimistic. And you'll see that by far the majority of people right across their businesses, they said that there's a high to very high potential for innovation. But when I then asked, well, what about the culture of your organisation and how, how would you rate that? You could almost flip it to the reverse. So you could see there, by far, the majority of people said that when it comes to the culture of, it, um, of their organisation, most said it was either neither innovative or stagnant, so, you know, just sort of level, I suppose, or, or maybe just a little bit innovative. So that tells me, um, you know, there's lots of potential, but there's also lots of work to do if we are going to sort of embrace those opportunities. And I guess on that, um, uh, on those opportunities, the other, another question that I asked, well, what are some of those opportunities then? And um, I don't want to go through what they are specifically, and I've actually got a much, much longer list um, of ideas that came back as a result of that question. But the point is, there's lots of things that we can be doing. But I think the big question is this one. So we know a lot of the what. It's not to say that there's not lots of new what's. There are, of course there are. But do we understand the how? Do we, do we try to understand the how? Um, and, and, you know, how, how do we bring these new ideas into our business? And something um, that Tim picked up on is, is, the, is the link between all of what I'm about to talk about, and that, and that really is the people. So I guess, uh, you know, 
I've sort of got four points here around some of, so, so some of the elements of the how. So we can be more systematic in our approach to innovation. So actually establishing metrics within our organisation uh, and so that it is part of what we do right across the business, not just about efficiency gains, um, not just about product development, but it's right, it's right across our business. And I think you can actually possibly do that maybe even from a sector perspective. I'm not actually sure whether it's... Uh, you know, I'd have to think through more as to how you could do it, but you could actually potentially have a sort of a whole of collaborative effort that has a much more sort of metric basis to it. And as I've touched on earlier, it is about the culture. So it is about having um, a, an organisation, leadership within that organisation that really supports new ideas, new ways of doing things and then having approach, an approach to actually implement or, or capture those ideas and then implement them within the business. Um, and whilst I have tried to emphasise today that it's not about just new product development, but it is that we actually have, you know, what we do within our organisation match to those sort of metrics that I spoke about before, but we actually have a systematic um, and proactive sort of documented approach to um, identifying and integrating innovation into, the, into how we operate our businesses. Nearly there. And then, um, and just finally then being, understanding your business and then being realistic about what is the right approach for your organisation. So if you're a small organisation, you're probably not going to do, you know, amazing blue sky research, but you do want to understand your customers and you do want to um, respond to their needs in the way that best suits your business. So I guess just um, back to the initial question that I posed, of course I don't think it's a buzzword, of course I think innovation is important um, and I think, of course I think it's important that we identify those what's but, uh, and, and that can be very easily demonstrated but I also think that we do need to uh, perhaps better uh, integrate the how, uh, have our businesses better understand the how and I think that can be done both at the business level but it perhaps is also something that needs to be um, promoted and embraced uh, from a more sector-wide and even an Australian country-wide perspective. So thank you. <laughs>